Joe Frazier got up twice from knockdowns to win his first big fight. We knew then that he could be, turned out to be, a warrior heavyweight king in the line of Dempsey and Marciano, a serial thriller. Joe is down again now, and this time he isn't getting up. Joe came from a dirt poor farm in South Carolina, the only crop that showed a profit. I met him in Philadelphia after he won the gold medal in 1964. To go pro, to be able to quit his job in a slaughterhouse, he needed the $20,000 that civic leaders collected. I bought a share for $250, a columnist stunt, so I could write about him from the view of the managerial we. A year later, when I left town, I sold the share for $2,000. But Joe never let me forget that it rose to $14,000. But nobody ever undersold him. Understandably, Joe is defined by his rivalry with Ali. Long after their epic battles, they're remembered for their polar opposite styles in and out of the ring. They were evenly, even intestinally matched in the ring. Fighting Joe was like debating with a guy who never stopped talking. Fighting Ali was like debating a guy who continually made his points while actually talking. But outside the ring, professionally, it was a mismatch. Ali routinely ridiculed and caricatured opponents, sometimes cruelly to promote their fights. Joe took it more personally than others, took it bitterly, to the grave. Why? Perhaps because he thought they were pals as well as rivals. Perhaps because he was just plain Joe, fighter, champion, good guy, while Ali was a towering hero, handsome, charming, charismatic, historic. Once Ali, in his rapping mode, rhymed Frasia with Amasia. I called upon another poet to express a universal celebration of Joe Fraser. May angels sing thee to thy rest. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 years ago, the entire sports universe was tuned in to Madison Square Garden, New York City. The event was known as the Battle of Champions. In the golden age of heavyweights, two Champions, each with a claim to the title and undefeated records, rose to the top and faced each other that night. In one corner, Muhammad Ali. In the other corner, 100, pardon me, 206 pounds of chiseled ebony steel. The son of a South Carolina sharecropper who fought his way to an Olympic gold medal and then to the hot hop of the heavyweight division. On that night, only one man left the ring after 15 rounds. He was undisputed, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. His name, Smokin' Joe Frazier. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, HBO Sports, and Bob Arum's top-ranked boxing. Please rise at this time as we toll a memorial count of 10 and say farewell to beloved Joe Frazier. Rest in peace, champion. Rest in peace. Joe Frazier was born a sharecropper's son in rural South Carolina and pursued a boxing career after moving north to Philadelphia. An Olympic gold medal winner in 1964, a world heavyweight champion by 1970, Smokin' Joe was known for the ferocious left hook he wielded like a sledgehammer. 
But the quiet Frazier was overshadowed by Muhammad Ali, who'd been stripped of his title after refusing to serve in the military. When Frazier and Ali finally met in 1971, it was dubbed the fight of the century, a clash between a current and former champion, neither of whom had ever lost a fight. That night, in Madison Square Garden, Frazier won. He said, don't you know I'm God? I said, God, you're in the wrong place tonight. But Frazier was overmatched by a young George Foreman in 1973, and after he lost a rematch with Ali the following year, Joe Frazier seemed washed up. In 1975, Ali agreed to give Frazier a lucrative fight in the Philippines, thinking it would be an easy win. Instead, the two men fought one of the most brutal, exhausting battles in boxing history. I wasn't happy about he didn't it, want but to he didn't I had want to continue going on. Frazier's corner mercifully prevented him from going into the ring for the 15th round in Manila. But Joe was Joe to the end, pleading for one more chance to keep fighting. I love my job. Uh, I love being a warrior. I love being a champion. Rest in peace.